thoughts on success and people being uh, um, set free from the drugs, alcohol, and, and all the different things that people go through. So, so do you want to come and we'll pray before you go to Children's Church? All right. Okay. You got it going, man. It's one of the four terms. Father, we just pray that you bless the kids as they go down now with you. We pray to bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay, we're started. We're looking at today at possessing the land, and it's a battle for the mind. Um, there is a battle for the mind. We talked about it last week. We have an enemy. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John 10 and 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to kill. So it means you can't do anything but that. Okay, cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So this is what God is offering, and the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If we think the enemy is our friend, we will wake up one day empty, broke, and destroyed. Uh, and there are many people who have thought, well, yeah, it's okay. The enemy is my friend. You read through the book of Proverbs, and it talks about how a prostitute goes out and sits by the street to uh, draw this young man in and say, listen, my husband's gone. He took lots of money. He's been gone for a while. And, and I've gone through all my purifications and I've got this bed made for you. And it's and it's uh, got all kinds of fancy scents on it. And, and, uh, and please come in and spend the night with me. And we'll make love till morning. Not realizing that it's the beginning of the destruction of that young man's life. And so there's so many things. Um, you know, um, what's, that, what's that saying? Uh, minute on the lips, uh, like lifetime on the hips. <laughs> uh, you know, like there's all kinds of things we think, well, oh, this would be okay, but not. And so we're looking at it today. We, we looked at the fact that the church has to acknowledge that there's an enemy. And the enemy doesn't want us to do it. The world doesn't want us to do it. The church must enter into deliver. Resisting in James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourself to, uh, therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you know, we need to walk into, into realizing that we submit to God and we resist the enemy. We, do, we come against him. We talked about losing. Losing. In Matthew 18, 18, it says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so it said, we've got, we've got to take advantage. We've got to take authority. Take authority. Say, enough of that. There are things that, that, that we know that they get us down. They might give us a good feeling for a while. Like, like someone said, you know, I, oh, I give a piece of my, my, my mind. Um, and does it feel good after? You think, oh boy, that wasn't even right. So we need to look at the fact of deliverance from bondage. Resistance is not enough. Uh, sometimes we need other people to help us when we need deliverance. Uh, in Matthew 8, 28 to 34, it says, casting out. And when he was come to the other side of the country, the Gadareans, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by the, that way. So they were tormenting people. They were, they were just making it miserable. And behold, they cried out and said, What have you to do with thee, Jesus, our Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know their time is coming and going, well, What are you doing here now? And there was a good way they have, there was a good way off from them, a herd of many swine feeding. And so the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out of these men that were tormenting everybody else, Suffer us to go into the herd of the swine. It's an interesting thing because they were supposed to have swine there. Uh, do you know that in, in, in Jerusalem, Israel right now, uh, even in a, in a um, where, um, zoo, whatever, if they have any pigs, they have to stay on wood boards. They're not allowed to put their feet on the, on the, the uh, ground. And so it said, and he said, and he said unto them, go. And when they were, came out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. Now the pigs had a choice. They would have said, don't let them come our way. <laughs> they knew what was going to happen. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen the possessed of the devils. Deliverance means that we come against the things that are there to take us down. Uh, the enemy actually occupies areas of, of a life, 
the area no longer under his control was when we, when we take authority and deal with it. Deliverance is done by believers who take authority and cast out demons. Um, there was a movie, and it's, the Catholic Church calls it exorcism. I don't think it was a really good exorcism. Because I, think, didn't, I don't know, I never watched it, but didn't, didn't the priest end up dying in the end? Yeah. I think that's, it. that's, not, that's not exorcism. <laughs> like, like uh, you set somebody free and then somebody else pays the price. So when we look at this dealing with, with the problems that come, in conclusion, our kingdom confronts kingdoms. The church must rise up in the power and the authority of the, of the head of the church. The Jerichos of wickedness must fall with all the rulers. Satan has had time to establish kingdoms throughout the earth. The church must challenge these authorities and pull down strongholds and wickedness. So how do we do it practically? Practical application in praying for a nation is discernment. Having a discernment that we um, discern the power and the presence of the enemy over the nation. Realize that there are some things going on. It's not just people. It's not just, um, you know, people come up with things, and even government people come up with things that are just beyond understanding. Where do they come from? Is it bringing life and hope and help, or is it bringing destruction, uh, death? Uh, so discernment. The second thing we need, confrontation. To break down the gates. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot the word tie today. <laughs> I think the first in a long time. I, Janet called for me to get something, and I, and I went to grab it and forgot to put the tie on. Can we, can we, I think, well, I could still probably preach, okay? The Germans don't wear ties at all, so that's okay. I feel like a German pastor today. And so uh, he said, we've got to break down the gates. You know, um, in Genesis 22 and 17, it says, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply the side of the sea, as the stars of the heaven, and as a sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. The gates are not there, to, they're, they're there to keep us out, but, but the Bible says that, that it won't happen. Isaiah 62, 10 says, Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highways, gather out the stones, lift up the standard of the people. Proverbs 20, 21, 22 said, The wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Psalm, 1, uh, Psalm 24, uh, verse 7 to 10, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And that's a song that we sing. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We need to realize the Lord is our strength. It's not us. But the Lord is strong and mighty in battle. So when you win the battle, realize like, like your dad is bigger than their dad. Because uh, their dad is a loser. Uh, our dad, our father, is our heavenly father, Lord strong. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And then we read in Matthew 16, 18, says, And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build in my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They will not. It doesn't say that they cannot, uh, or that, that, that they might not, but they will not prevail against it. But we're called to identify and come against the enemy. Lift up the standard for the people. Call the people to righteousness. Isaiah 43 and 5 to 5 says, The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the deserts, uh, desert a highway for, for our God. Every valley will be shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. He's declaring victory, victory in God. Um, the, the, the mountains are going to come down, the valleys are going to be raised up. We have victory when we realize we're not doing this alone. Look at where the battleground uh, what finds us. We must possess the land of the mind. And that's what I'm going to talk about just for a few minutes. Possessing the land of the mind. The command from the Lord is possess the land within. The mind is a great battlefield until every thought is brought into obedience to Christ. There can be no peace. And that's where the battleground is. Mark 12, 30 says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And so we see that we're called to uh, allow our minds to get uh, featured and focused on the Lord. And so uh, what do we have today to stop that? Well, number one, we have TV and media filters, fillers. 
um, in um, J July 31st, 2018, it says that American, American, I want us to take a bit of a, a look at, at how much time and, and what is filling our minds. Our minds are being filled uh, in, in uh, July 31st, uh, uh, 2018. American adults spend over 11 hours per day listening to, watching, reading, or generally interacting with media. According to the first quarter of the 2018 Nielsen Total Audience Report, nearly half an adult's day is dedicated to consuming this content. Well, there's lots of good stuff, but we have but lots that isn't good too. <laughs> you can fill your mind with what's on TV, and it's oh my goodness, it's it's uh, and they're getting worse and worse and worse. And we're called to let our mind uh, be put fully toward the Lord. So what else do we have in um, the uh, purchase of uh, purchase our minds and our money? The source projected that global advertising spends spending would amount to approximately. Five hundred and fifty-seven billion dollars in advertising. Five hundred and fifty-seven billion dollars in advertising. It's all to get your mind. <laughs> That's what it's about. Eh? A little bit of emotion, a little bit of mind. You know, like you see these sad commercials, and, and it's a dry in there. So the question I ask today is this: The Bible says, "Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path." And I ask the question for myself. Okay, you can ask it of yourself, but I'm asking it of myself. By word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So what is sin? Sin is when we choose to go selfish. Selfish is when we entertain what we want. Uh, after it's over, we're maybe not that happy. Uh, I don't know about you, but you know, like, uh, you go to a smorgasbord, you go for the second one, and after you wish you hadn't. Anybody ever been there? Uh, well, we were taught as kids growing up, you know, like, like when the food's on the plate, you eat it all. So then what we have to learn to do is not put a tick smaller plate. Because we're going to eat it all anyways. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, I don't know how many times that happens to me. I'm just thinking, oh, and then I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you know. But you see, this is the, our natural thing. Well, we got to do this, or, or we need that. We don't really need it. Uh, who's winning our time in this world that we're living in today? Um, the Word of God, the Spirit of the Lord, caring for others, or the media, or all these other things. The area of the battle that we face is, is, is in the thought area. Ways to which the ground is given to the enemy. We have to give it to him. He doesn't just take it. We have to give it to him. Um, an unrenewed mind in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1 to 4 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have re renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We walk not in craftiness or handling the word, uh, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but in all, but manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel is hid, it's hid to those that are lost. There are people that are lost, and we can be lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. There is a blinding going on. There is a, a, a manufactured and there is a created, there is a, a well-established um, journey to keep us away from the things that where, where our minds can focus on God. And so we read in, um, but their minds were blinded until the day remaineth the same veil untaken away from the reading of the Old Testament, which the veil has done away with Christ. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, And you that he has quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And going after selfishness. When we think of sins, it's not, I did this and I did that. I did. Sin, what sin is, the basis of sin we find in the, in the garden, was choosing self. Choosing self. So Lucifer said to Eve, God knows that you're going to be as smart as him. Oh, oh. Well, you can eat of anything in the garden, but not that one. Why? Because he's holding it back from you. You're going to be a little bit smart. You're going to be smart as God. You're going to know all about evil. Was he telling the truth? Absolutely. Did we need to know all about evil? Absolutely not. And uh, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And so he said, uh, we were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherefore, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our con conversions in past times to the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who was rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he's loved us, even when we're dead in sin, hath quickened us together in Christ, by grace we're saved. And he hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow, heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus has been raised from the dead and he has been seated at the right hand of the Father, high above all power and authority, the works of the enemy. And here it says, we've been raised to be seated up with him if we focus on it. If we don't, we can be down in the mud and in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pig sty. Uh, at, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace we're saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And for Colossians 1.20 says, And having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they are things in the earth or things in the heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now how he reconciled. He's saying we can, we can focus on the Lord, our minds, in the body of his flesh through death to present your holy and unblameable, unreproachable in his sight. If we continue in faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which we have heard, and which was preached of every creature which is under the heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister. What he's saying there is that, that we can fall into that, and we can be led away into that, and there's stuff that will lead us away into that, and we know what it is. You know what, you know what dog food is, and you know what, what food, that good food is, and you know, we know what's, what's poison, and we know what's, what's good, and we need to follow with that which is good. Or we'll dwell in darkness. And God said, we don't have to dwell in darkness anymore. He's brought us out. The carnal mind, we read in Romans 8 and 6, says, For to be carnally mind is death, minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. And a carnal person dwells and lives and thinks about the flesh. They're always thinking about, how can I get ahead? How, what more can I do? I, li I love to listen to uh, uh, Joel Olsen was talking today about uh, what we need to do is realize that God's got things in control. And you go in and do the best you can wherever you are. Wherever you work, you give the best. You, you don't say, well, you know, like, and he, he was telling the story about David. David went out to take food to his brothers. He didn't go out to tackle Goliath. He went out to take food to his brothers. Not much. And then they said, oh, you little snot, what are you doing out here? You just want to come and say, who's looking after the sheep? And, you know, what are you doing out here? But he went out to, to do what his father said. Take food to your brothers. And he said, when we do what we're called to do, and not worry about being out in the front, the time will come when God will put us on the front. But we're just doing what we're called to do. But if we walk in the flesh, it says, by lies and deception admitted to the mind. We need to realize we can't walk in the flesh. We can't be drawn about to what we want. Our passivity of the mind, he permits his reasoning powers to settle into inertia and welcomes any thought which issues uh, from the inner, inert state. We can have things, uh, there's a battle for our minds. It's just, it's always there. Everywhere we look and, and you just listen to the news and, and it's, it's pretty bad because the, I mean, the Bible said that the day would come when evil would be considered good and good would be considered evil. And if there hasn't been a, a day that that isn't true, today is that day. Um, but you know what we need to realize is that we're not alone in this. We're in a spirit world, and it's 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 and uh, they're becoming more and more blatant about it, and seeing it on TV and, and the movies and the programs and everything about devil and Satan and and darkness and all that kind of and, and horrible. But you know, we always have to come back to the fact that there's a, a third of the of, of the angels went with Satan, but they're outnumbered two to one. We have twice as many angels in spirit, in the spirit power there for us. We must know that the enemy tries to take us out, uh, but, but we don't have to accept it. There's uh, three mind characteristics of, this, of, 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 of the spirit of the enemy. 
the thoughts, when, three things that will happen if, if we're being bombarded by the enemy's thoughts. To try and think over our mind. Number one, the thoughts always invade from the outside, entering primarily via the mind through the eyes and the ears and through the desires. And so those thoughts come to invade us. And when you're feeling invaded, it's time to say, Mom, I don't need to accept that. That's not me. That's not me. Uh, so the thoughts will try to invade us from the outside. Secondly, the thoughts force or push or coerce man to take action immediately. Uh, the best examples of this are the online marketers. Uh, have you ever got off to an online marketer that's just telling you, like, if you don't buy this now, you're stupid? I mean, that's really a great way to sell it, isn't it? <laughs> They'll tell you you're stupid and you'd be foolish not to do this. And, and what are they doing? Uh, and, and, and look, can, can I call you back? No, if you don't buy it now, you won't, I, I, you won't be able to get it. Well, right then you need to say, I guess I don't need it. If you can't call them back, it's not worth getting. Okay? The pressure is, if they can make you make that commitment, and there's, they're getting worse now. And it's getting worse. I, I, I saw the, on the news the other day in Edmonton, this, um, this um, three guys came into a restaurant. And, uh, and they snuck out without paying. It's called Dine and Dash. And then the lady was pretty upset anyways, but the one guy came back. And he came back to pay the bill. And she, and she said, oh, my faith was re renewed. And he was there for a little while. And then, uh, and then unbeknown to them, what he did is he, they were staking the place out. He switched the, the debit machine, left a dud, and took theirs and with ours had taken thousands out of their, out of their business. You know, that's the kind of stuff that's going on. And see, so, I mean, you can't even trust to leave a debit machine sitting there because, um, and then you can, there's garages where people go in and, and will do something over it or in, in, in or stores, and they'll do something onto a debit machine and, and when you put your, your card in there, it reads your code number and they get into your account. It's so, about, oh my goodness. So <coughs> the pressure, pressure is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, or the other thing, the third thing is, our mind struggles, and we're not going to go into really deep, totally deep today because we are for communion as well, but the mind struggles, their thoughts confuse and paralyze, paralyze man's mind so they can be no longer thinking clearly. And if you're starting to feel confused and paralyzed, God has not given us a spirit of confusion in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Not a confused mind, a sound mind. And when that sound mind is going away and we're confused, it's time to say, whoa, I think I'll just go pray a little bit. And maybe I'll talk to somebody about it. And so we see this part of the possessing land means getting victory in, 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 in our minds. And that's a huge thing to find that, that place of victory in our minds. Philippians 4 and 8 says, so, finally, brethren, what are we supposed to put in our minds? Well, he tells us, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, well, it's just a little lie. Whatsoever things are just. Well, it's not, you know, you can steal from the stores because they, they read it into the price. You see, we're, we're, the mind is telling us it's okay. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are good, a report. And if there's any virtue and if there's any praise, think on these things. How do we let our minds get focused on God? Well, he said, you miss it. They're honest, just, pure. Lovely, a good report, virtue. If there's any praise, think on these things. We need to work on, on our minds, getting focused on those things. The battle is there for the mind, focusing on what we need to focus on what the Lord has done. I don't think I'll use this chair next week because kill my legs. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's just it's just I'm sunk down in the middle. <laughs> and so I thought I'd get up higher. I'll just go back up on the platform. Uh, okay, so what are the things that are that are the folks on the Lord or we focus on the on, on the world and the mind? Um, have you noticed that um, all the lottos now are just getting up to 60 million all the time? Can you imagine how many tickets are sold if they can give 60 million away? In the hundreds of millions of dollars? Who? Oh. Well, but, 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 and they've got all these commercials on TV and you just, the bear goes out of the, uh, you know, out early spring and, 
and all these things. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I've got a thousand dollars today, and I get a thousand dollars tomorrow, and I got a thousand dollars. And every day, I've got to figure out what to do with a thousand dollars. And and there's a hundred million people that don't get it. <laughs> they don't tell you that part, okay? And we're just drawn into. It. But look at what we could do. I, I could, first of all, I could cheer the hockey players on, then I could cheer them on at the arena, and then I'll be the coach. <laughs> That's why they won a commercial. Uh, they all, uh, why? Because they won, but they're not going to win. Um, you know something? When, when major, and I don't mean to make it hard on us, but when major, major um, lotteries are won, they advertise that store. How many times have you seen the Bentley store advertise? That shows you our chances in Bentley. <laughs> or anywhere else. Or anywhere else. And then not, nothing wrong with buying tickets, but just don't begin to believe this is an answer to something. Our minds are being tested. Abortion, right up to the last, just before the baby's born. I read a thing just today, and, and they're saying, doctors go in and operate on babies within the mother's womb. Yet yeah, the abortion laws said they could be aborted right up to just before they're born. Are they a child or are they not? And they can bring heart healing and all kinds of stuff in the womb. You know, and you just go like, but we're being told these things. We're being told, you got it's a women's rights. Well, what if the baby was a girl? And it dies. Isn't that women's rights? You know, like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And the stories of people, even, well, what if they're raped? Well, what if they're raped? It's stories of people that were born through rape, and some of them are changing the world because they were born. And so, but we're being, I'm just trying to say, these are things that bombard our minds, not to put us down, okay? Um, let the child decide whether it's a boy or a girl. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> let them decide whether they're a boy or a girl. They're four years old. Well, you just make up your mind. You know, are you kidding? Are you, we're, but we believe this stuff because it's bombarded on us. How many children out there, like the way they, they bring it on, well, you're, you're, you're prejudiced and you're against this and you're phobia and all that. How many children are actually out there that, how many children in, in, in uh, 32 million people don't know if they're a boy or a girl? Think about it. How many don't know? Homosexuality and all that. How many of them, you know, what? They're not the majority. They're a very, 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 very small minority. And you know what? We get suckered into it. We get followed. I, I have my own personal feelings dealing with homosexuality because, because when I moved to Vancouver, I was 15 years old. I was 15 years old. My family had split up and they got back together. I was a hurt little young boy. Living, I never finished school and I went to learn to be a cook. And I got down in the west end of Vancouver and I was a target for all the men. They followed me. I wasn't smart. You've heard my story. Uh, I've watched a Cliff, Cliff Richard movie, and he, it was so cool because he, you know, he's singing and everything, and he was dressed in white, white pants, white shoes, white socks, white shirt. Um, so I decided, well, that's kind of cool. So I, I dressed up like that and went into the white lunch on Granville. I didn't know the white lunch was all white lunch. <laughs> And when I left, two guys went out and followed me, and they were fighting over who was going to get me. And I got scared because the bus wasn't coming. I'm a stupid little kid in Vancouver. And they say, no, oh, it's just, uh, it, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, uh, adults that are, you know, agree. Hey, I, I, they started, the homosexual crowd went after me when I was 13. I had a friend that, Mighty Mike Cleaver, he was a, the, the DJ at, at Kelowna, and he took me every. He had a little Honda car, you know, little, the first Honda cars he had. He took me everywhere, took me to dances and everything. And I, and, and I didn't know, understand why I was having a good old time. I was 15 then and dancing and carrying on, and he just stood and looked. And then he wanted to take me skinny dipping out in the country. I go, oh my goodness. I think people thought, he must be like that. So in Vancouver, these men are after me. These two guys are following me. This is not a, you know, adults that are consenting. This is a 15-year-old, and these are grown men. And uh, so finally, I was scared, and I was bold, I guess. And I jumped in the air and went, hi I know karate and judo. You better get out of here. And I did two more Chinese words, too. <laughs> 
But they're out to get me. I've had people drive across, block me as I'm walking on the sidewalk. Hi. I'm a little kid. Don't tell me this is just a normal thing. But we believe it. And if you say anything, you're a homophobic. You know, and so we believe, and it's all a battle for our minds. I'm not saying we love people that go through this, and, and God loves them, and it's not about being against them, but we don't have to believe that it's majority. The mind is trying to tell us, this is the way it's all going. It's not all going like that. Or how about, uh, let's keep Christianity on life. Don't bring it into the school. Don't bring it in here. Don't bring it in there. Um, you know, but, but now they're trying to teach... Uh, Buddhism down in the States, uh, you know, they're in, the, in, the, in the classes where they have three 15-minute breaks where they meditate on Buddhism in public school. They're like, wow, you can't even pray a prayer in the morning. Uh, but, but, you know, it's anything but Christianity. So you say, well, you know the separation of church and state. Have you ever heard that? It's a separation of church and state. So don't let the church get into the world. No, 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 that wasn't what they meant when they said the separation of church and state. They'd come out of, out of, out of Rome and, and different countries where the government made a set religion and everybody had to be in. So no, 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 America won't be like that. There'll be a separation of church and state. You follow the faith that you decide. The government will, and that's what separation of church and state is about. You listen to Ronald Reagan, he explains that really well. But we believe this, oh, that means we can't mention God in church. You know, we can't have crosses, we can't have this. Well, we, we, we are in a state of, of the enemy trying to take our minds. To keep the state out of the church, not the church out of the state. Um, it's an interesting thing that Israel does not have, um, that, that Israel now has claim to, to Palestine. Um, and what's the world trying to say, except for the United States? Um, Jerusalem isn't, it doesn't belong to, to, the, to the Israelis. Um, why would you think they want to, and, and, and the Palestinians and all these and the, uh, uh, different groups, they all want to just, the, the Jews are saying, okay, we'll give you the goal, I think it was the Golan Heights, uh, they gave them, or the West Bank, West Bank. They gave it to them, said, okay, if you want some more land, they gave it to them. So what do they do? They shoot missiles out of it. They gave them money to, to uh, and they made, they made it beautiful, they made it um, productive and all that. And so what do they do? They go in there and they take the money and they build tunnels to try and get into the other part. You know, to, to, to kill them, to destroy them. And I listened and it was so important what I heard. Uh, Israel is back in the Holy Land after 2,000 years. They're back in the Holy Land. Why does, does the world want Israel out of the Holy Land? I'll tell you why. Because after Jesus comes and takes the church up to meet him in the sky, he's coming back for Israel. And he's going to land down in Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives with the Jews there. So you see why they don't want the Jews there? Because it's bringing close to the return of the Lord. And, and, and for, after 2,000 years, they're back there, and we're getting ready for the, the Lord to return and to, 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 to uh, ascend and come down into, into Jerusalem. And so that's why they don't, the world does not, and the enemy, the thief, does not want Israel to be there. The Palestinians, they've never had that land. They've been, dis they've been uh, displaced um, Arabs, put out of other Arab countries, and they've just squatted there. But they try and claim it like it's their land. <coughs> but it's not. And it says, what will happen in Zechariah 14? It says, then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. There's a battle coming, the battle of Armageddon, it's coming. And it's going to be in there, and the whole world's going to come against Israel. And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will cleave. It's going to break open in the midst thereof toward the east and, the, and toward the west. And there shall be a val great valley, and half the mountains will be removed toward the north and half toward the south. Wow, it's almost like when they parted the Red Sea. Almost like when they parted the Jordan. And you know what's going to happen? There's going to be a river running down there to the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is going to come to life when Jesus comes and puts his feet down there. Uh, it's an interesting thing that um, when Israel got back the Palestine, the land, um, they, there was a six-day war. A six-day war. 
say, wow, that's interesting. Well, there was another six-day war. When they first went there, what was that one? Jericho. They marched around for six days, and on the seventh day, the walls came down. And there was a six-day war when Israel took the land because it's getting ready. So don't believe the media. Can't believe. It's to get our minds focused on what's not really true. And, 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 every, and, and it's amazing. You can even talk to Christian, Christian people. They'll argue with you on this. But, you know, we come back to the fact that, hey, it's all about remembering what Jesus did on the mount, on the mount, on Mount Calvary. He gave his life. So 1 Corinthians 10, 11, we're going to close with this before we go to the communion. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he take it, break it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until it comes. Remembering his death. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, the bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. <clears throat> but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. For when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together, eat, to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hungers, let him eat at home, that ye come not together under condemnation, and that the rest I'll set in order when I come. And you know I've said it so many times in the communion services. When we come, if we don't feel worthy, that's why we come to communion. If we feel worthy, we're not. None of us has died, given our lives. Jesus did it for us, and we we'll remember what he's done. If, if we feel worthy, we don't need to partake in communion because we're okay, we don't need the Lord. But the fact is, we're not worthy because we do need the Lord. And so we remember his broken body and his shed blood. So Father, I just pray today as we prepare for our communion, and Lord, as we think of this whole thing of our mind, there's so much trying to bombard and take our minds and fill our minds and, and, and keep us away from the things of God. But Lord, thank you that, Lord, our mind in you is, is, is you would say you keep us in perfect peace when our mind is staying in you. Help us to focus on prayer, your word, and, and Lord, there's so much other stuff to fill it. But Lord, may we fill our hearts and our minds with the things of the Spirit. Lord, we just thank you for this now, in Jesus' name. As we partake of these emblems, may we just realize that um, it's about your shed blood, your broken body, uh, given for us so freely, and we are brought back into a relationship with our Heavenly Father. So we give you praise for this now in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Larry, if you'd come. I'll let Mary, Mary, you can help today. Larry and Mary, if you want to come and help serve. She put them together, so we'll let her serve. They're going to sing. Yeah, you can do it that way. Thanks, man. Okay, if you want to just go ahead and start singing, well, they'll be starting a song.